Hello, my name is Naomi Burgess. I'm a member of the Immersive Realities Research Group at the Lucerne University of Applied Sciences and Arts, uh, specifically the School of, Immer of Information Technology. And today I'm here to present to you uh, Let It Be, uh, the processes behind designing a VR beekeeping series game called VRBs using triadic game design uh, for eventual usage in a course taught by Bienenschweiz, or the Beekeeper Association of the German-speaking part of Switzerland. So when it comes to serious games, that is, games that do not solely have entertainment as their purpose, uh, major categories of which include learning and training games, it sometimes isn't quite clear how one should frame the design process, right? Um, and this, is, this can be especially challenging since designing serious games often involves uh, collaborating with stakeholders and experts from different domains, which is, on one hand, a well-documented necessity for producing effective and engaging learning games, but on the other hand, uh, often can result in vastly different ideas of what the game should or shouldn't entail, etc. And as our team found out, um, the team behind the development of VRBs, uh, that was also the case when designing a series game for beekeeper training, um, which is what our end goal was with VRBs. Uh, as I get into as I get into a bit later, uh, beekeeping is a profession with many intric intricacies and challenges and implications for the future of our environment. Uh, and educators and beekeepers who could benefit from such a training game come in all sorts of uh, subject matter requirements and competency levels and styles of beekeeping with specific needs in terms of improving their skills. Uh, so how do we ensure that we're effectively balancing all those wants and needs to deliver a learning game that accurately addresses uh, our users' needs? Well, one framework in particular that we found uh, for this that we found incredibly helpful for this task is the framework of triadic game design uh, outlined by Caspar Hartefeld uh, in his book of the same name. Uh, essentially, this method addresses the difficulties of multidisciplinary collaboration uh, by breaking the process of game design down into three major categories that can be geared towards specific stakeholders. Uh, these categories, uh, called worlds, are as follows. Reality, the first is reality, uh, or how the real world is represented or reflected in your game. There's meaning, which is the purpose of your game, so what you're trying to get the, per the player to learn or do think or do. Uh, and then there's play, which is the parts of the game that are all about engaging users in a fun, playful manner. Uh, this is where concepts like flow come into play, for example. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit unclear where to start with respect to these three worlds. For us, we found success delving into the world of reality first by taking a look at the initial problem space a bit deeper. So looking more into, really digging into uh, current beekeeping and beekeeper uh, training practices and where we might be able to intervene in those with this particular game. So with respect to the state of beekeeping in Switzerland currently, well, bee beekeeping is something that's on the rise uh, in Switzerland is an activity that's proven to be fairly economically significant. Um, but the honeybee, uh, which is uh, quite possibly uh, one of the most vital organisms on the planet, is both quite fragile and at risk at the moment, not only from agricultural practices and uh, climate change, um, not only from var varroamites uh, or improper handling of infestation, uh, but also from unknowingly over-disrupting colonies. Um, all of this makes beekeeping a highly complex activity, meaning that beekeepers must be well-trained uh, from the start to know how to handle and recognize all these different kinds of situations, right? But training beekeepers is hard, uh, and this is because of a number of reasons, some of the more major ones being... Uh, First of all, the risk that comes with the sensitive nature of honeybees, which again can suffer or die from either uh, too many interventions or just a few clumsy interventions. Uh, the fact that bee colonies and their behavior don't always follow textbook patterns. And then there's also the inherently seasonal nature of beekeeping, uh, that certain tasks or preparation or practical training for certain tasks can only take place at certain times uh, or specific times during the year. Indeed, all, this, all these factors, coupled with the, with the fact that some beekeeper training courses, uh, with some beekeeper training co courses still being taught theoretically uh, via textbooks, images, and videos, makes it very difficult 
uh, very, very difficult to provide hands-on training with actual beehives, uh, which therefore means it's also hard to provide beekeepers in training with first-hand experience of the wide variety of scenarios and situations they'll have to watch out for. And finally, it's hard to help trainees prepare for crucial, oftentimes seasonal tasks ahead of time, as well as view potential consequences of their actions that may not manifest until later down the line. So with all this in mind, and with the advice of Hartefeld to prototype as often as possible, we constructed a first VR prototype to evaluate what our final application should entail, since practical exercises were identified as a current gap in beekeeper training. Uh, we set up a simple scenario, a, sim a single hive box containing seven frames in total on top of a wooden table in, in the middle of a field. Players can inspect the box and its environment as well as, well as pull out to the virtual hive's frames, which hold the combs inside. Uh, each comb has, has uh, bees running around on it with one comb containing a queen bee. Additionally, there are bees flying back and forth between various areas in the grass surrounding the perimeter. Uh, and surrounding you is sort of the ever-present sound of buzzing bees. Uh, we, de we developed this prototype in Unity uh, using uh, Valve Index. As the Valve Index is our headset uh, for its high image quality and resolution, since we'd be employing a fairly detail-oriented, observation-heavy uh, task in our user studies, user studies, which we'll get into a bit later. Um, Something that we did while creating the prototype was pay close attention to elements that would allow us to ensure our prototype reflected key aspects of the world of reality that would help us address challenges of beekeeper training. Uh, so for instance, being able to closely inspect or distinguish between individual bees, which was one of the reasons behind our, sel our particular selection of a VR headset. Uh, of course, we did run, we did run into some, some difficulties with respect to rendering the thousands upon thousands of bees present in a real hive. Uh, this is one issue that we'll have to tackle again in the future when we come back to it. Uh, once we had our prototype, we conducted 36 uh, preliminary play tests during two exhibi exhibitions of the project. Uh, after a short introduction, participants were given a the, given the task of finding the randomly spawned queen bee and briefed on how to pull out frames. Uh, and they engaged with the experience on an average uh, for uh, an average of five minutes. Afterwards, we asked users to provide free feedback by filling in a translated shell games playtest questionnaire, which allowed us to identify a variety of usability problems, for instance, with issues of grabbing the various frames, uh, and confirm an overall sufficient quality of the prototype for the main user study. We then use the prototype to carry out that, that user study, uh, that main user study, to gain insight from our various stakeholders, namely beekeepers with uh, differing levels of competency. Uh, to do this, we first mapped out various competence levels with respect to beekeeping, uh, building on Stuart E. Dreyfus's uh, definitions for level of competency and collaborating with beekeeping experts. Uh, when recruiting study participants, we took into account age, gender, years of experience, formal training to help assign them to one of, uh, and formal training to help assign them to one of the aforementioned uh, competence levels uh, that are listed above, and uh, and ensure that we were avoiding potential biases. We then, use, we then carried out our exploratory user study with 12 participants of varying competence levels, except for the novice level, uh, who have yet to take up beekeeping and thus have different needs from those who are already practicing beekeepers. Uh, all participants were from the German-speaking part of Switzerland, and none had prior experience in VR. Uh, each beekeeper was tasked with finding the queen bee, a common task for beekeepers uh, before play sessions. We asked the current participant uh, gen uh, general questions about their beekeeping background, and afterwards, we prompted them, prompted them to reflect on the game they had just experienced, especially respect, with respect to how it could be expanded um, <clears throat> and what specific scenarios would be most valuable. The two-part interview lasted about 40 minutes in total, in addition to about 10 minutes in VR. We then transcribed the interviews and performed a thematic analysis on them to more accurately pinpoint areas of the state of beekeeper training that our serious VR game could tackle. Again, re relating back to that world of reality. So some results, uh, many of the participants uh, or the responses we uh, received corroborated, corroborated our points from earlier concerning the difficult nature of beekeeping as a profession, emphasizing how beekeepers need to be able to take into account changing aspects of our world and adapt their practices to them, something that experienced beekeepers often do not do. 
Um, also, again, our participants uh, emphasize the difficulty of providing effective training, especially when it comes to supporting multiple different competence levels, as well as unique advantages VR can bring to the table to address challenges within training. Uh, finally, we found that while some aspects of beekeeper training would actually benefit from us deviating from the world of reality, so being able to, for instance, getting, getting an in-depth look into parts of the hive that, from perspectives one may not normally be able to embody, uh, there were some aspects that would need to stick fairly close to reality in order for the game to provide a valuable learning experience for trainees, namely hive structure and bee behavior, and also comb weight. This all goes to show that, well, that A, it's good to establish what elements of reality need to be accurately represented and which ones can be tweaked and bended. And also, uh, different parts of the world of reality are, value, are valued differently by learners of different competence levels, which is something to take in cons into consideration when figuring out what aspects of reality you want to represent in your games and how you want to go about that for different learners. So now that we had a glut of ideas to respect, with respect to learning scenario co uh, concepts, we needed to figure out how to categorize them to figure out exactly what types of learning would be meaningful for our players. So transferring here into the uh, world of meaning, what exactly do we want our do we uh, want uh, our learners to our players to get out of this game and how? So by looking at activity types and learning outcomes of these various concepts are. Um, our participants floated during the during the interview process, um, during the uh, user study process. Uh, we were able to nail down a set of seven general learning modes that we can use as a backbone for creating gameplay, as well as pinpointing exactly what a player should be gleaning from certain kinds of play. We call this framework the seven X's. From our data, we also gained some indication as how these seven modes are weighted by the respondents. Some of them seem nice to have for all levels of proficiency, while others are especially relevant in certain stages. Uh, the ratings in the above table are based on our interpretation of interview statements, both from uh, participants of the specific competency, competency level, uh, as well as participants with higher competency. So now we had our seven X's, uh, we needed to create methods of play that then reinforce the learning goals set forward by the, the aforementioned learning modes. Um, this is what we did for, uh, for exercise, examination, and, uh, um, and experiment. Um, since X1 didn't seem to have much of an advantage over teaching with traditional media, X6 can be seen as more of an extension of X5, and X7 lies more on the simulation side with a little bit of less direct interaction, and X3 seemed a bit out of scope for us at the moment, as we need to create entirely, under, entirely separate underlying environments for that mode. We also deviated a bit from uh, Triadic Game Design here to think about genre neck, uh, or the triadic game design suggested to think about genre next and decided to think about types of fun and what we wanted to inject into the game concepts we built on top of our learning modes. And that's where the uh, mechanics, dynamics, aesthetics framework is something uh, came a bit more into play here, it was especially useful for this. Uh, in the end, we created three concepts. Uh, Be Ready, which focuses on correctly performing uh, general everyday tasks related to beekeeping. Be My Doctor, which focuses on diagnosing hive ailments via reading, uh, reading bee behavior population, checking contents of, of debris under the hive, etc. And Be Master, which allows for more freeform gameplay in which players take care of a hive over several in-game years and immediately observe impacts related to their actions. So some additional insights from our user study. Many of our participants emphasize the importance of utilizing VR in this training context, especially given practical advantages over current methods of learning in the space, um, especially when it comes to feeling, creating or simulating weight of hive frames. Uh, this importance placed on certain interaction-based and physical elements of the beekeeping process to replicate or, uh, emphasize, in our, or emphasize in our game stems from the idea of fidelity um, and that there are certain and that there are certain types of fidelity in serious games that one can focus on achieving. Um, according to uh, Lukosz et al.'s uh, classification of, of fidelity, there are generally four kinds of fidelity, so physical, um, functional, psychological, and social. And at this point in the de design process, it can be good to sort of pinpoint uh, which of these aspects of fidelity would be best for you to focus on in your game. Again, going back to that idea of figuring out which elements 
um, of reality need to be accurately represented and which can be tweaked, bended, or artistically interpreted. Uh, for us, the vast majority of our feedback landed on functional and physical fidelity and the need to, and especially in the need for realistic uh, B behavior. Uh, for, uh, of course, accurately simulating that behavior is something that will likely prove challenging as we move forward with development, uh, again, as I previously stated, uh, alongside the difficulty of rendering in VR thousands of animated bees that would normally be populating a healthy hive. So finally, let's take a look back on the steps we took to get here with respect to uh, to how the use of triadic game design has permeated our process. First, we took a look at all three roles of T TGD as they stand with respect to beekeeper training. So what is the activity or profession like? What are its current challenges? What does a typical learner's journey look like at the moment? What relevant games already exist? Second, we built a short prototype as quick as possible, choosing to emphasize elements of the world of reality by weighing impact versus implementation effort Third, we conducted a user study with people in uh, with people in and adjacent to our target user group with a variety of different competence levels, um, crafting our interview guidelines with all three worlds of TGD in mind. Uh, fourth, we looked over our participants' responses uh, to compare to them to compare them with what we had found earlier about beekeeping as a profession, which also allowed us to figure out what elements of reality we needed to represent accurately and where a high level of fidelity was crucial. Uh, fifth, we categorized those experiences into general learning modes with different appeal to different levels of competence that we can then use as templates for rough game designs. And finally, our next steps would be to take these rough concepts and start prototyping them and iterating them further, again, with all the worlds of triadic game design in mind. So, <laughs> thank you to Bean and Schweitz for their ongoing support, as well as all of our other funders. Uh, we couldn't have done this without you. And uh, lastly, if you'd like to reach out to us, uh, you can email us here, or you can get in touch with us via at Hoslu, H-S-L-U underscore I-R on Twitter. Thanks, uh, and enjoy the rest of FDG 2021.